to the Countess and Kristoff Variety Channel. I just got something in the mail today that I am super excited to do this craft for. I cannot wait to share it with you. Okay, so are you ready guys? I got glow in the dark shrink paper. Yay! Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing with these is super, super cool. I've been waiting to do them. I ordered this uh, like a month ago. It just now got here. Um, so I'm super excited. I'm gonna be trying to make some of my own Halloween earrings with these just in time for spooky season. So these are actually computer printable and I've already drawn my designs on Procreate and I'll run the time-lapse video so you can see my creation for each one of these. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been watching some creators um, on TikTok make these and they're really, really short videos and I love her stuff, but it's just not my style. So I wanted to make some weird quirky ones just for me. <laughs> uh, can you tell how giddy I am? I'm like really excited. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, I can't imagine anything cuter than what I have in mind for these. So <laughs> I hope you guys like them too. Um, so I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a huge fish person. So I know in the Turkic Ghost painting, you saw my fish tank behind me while I was painting. Um, those are my guppies, but um, a lot of people don't know that I'm like fish obsessed. I have, currently, I have one, five little fish tanks and I am about to set up two more. Um, before I moved into the apartment, I actually had 11 fish tanks going. So yeah, it's a little bit of a problem. Um, these fish tanks are all much smaller. So I'm going to do some fish inspired skeleton earrings. I know it's quirky and weird guys, but guys stick with me. I think they're gonna be super cute. I even did a regular um, fish bowl design with a bubble eyed goldfish because I think I can make him swing inside of the goldfish bowl. I'm gonna try that. Uh, but I'm super excited to try this project. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys my time lapses for each design. And then I'm going to jump right into printing and making these. So I'm super excited. Um, and I hope that this works out because I've never tried this before. This is something completely new to me. So um, this should be really, really fun. All right, let's get going. <laughs> my workspace don't judge me too much this office is like half the size of the old one I used to have so it's kind of cramped um, first thing I need to do is I basically sent my images to myself in email so that they would go from procreate to my desktop um, I save them as PNGs that's really important because you want clear outlines and then I'm just going to use well I use photo impact pro but if you're more comfortable with Adobe Photoshop or any of those other programs you can use those I just have been working with photo impact pro 13 for a very long time so I'm going to continue using that so I'm basically going to download my images and then put them on photo impact pro so that I can arrange them on single sheets and then I'm going to print them all right, so I don't know if you guys want to watch me do that, but we'll see what, what happens. <laughs> All right, so I basically have to open my downloads. So open onto the design space. Now I save these all at 300 DPI, so they're pretty high resolution. You wanna do that just so that you get a really clear, crisp image when you're printing. I really, really love this design. It's very simple. It's just a goldfish skeleton on a black goldfish outline. I think these are gonna be one of my favorites this year, so I'm gonna start with this design. I'm gonna drop all the others to the bottom. 
Now I do know on this design, there needs to be a little bit more black up here uh, so that you can put your holes so that they can swing freely. Um, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna wait till after I print to decide where that's gonna be because I'm not sure exactly sure how it's gonna lay out. So I'm gonna leave that stuff till I'm cutting them. I'm gonna be cutting these by hand today. I'm choosing not to use my Cricut machine um, only because I've heard of the nightmares of print and then cut. So I'm going to stay away from that this time. I will toy around with that a little bit more later and then when I figure some things out maybe I will show that in a video too later on. I'm going to open up a new image with a transparent background and I'm going to make like eight and a half by 11 inch size paper. And then I'm going to drag and drop these images into that new size so that I know exactly what their size layout's going to be when I go to print on the printer. So these are just a little bit too big to fit on the page. I'm going to either shrink them a little bit. I could move them uh, closer together alternatively, but I don't want these earrings to be too big either. I know that shrink paper shrinks about five times its size, so something half the page is gonna be, you know, like that big when it's done, which is perfect for me. I don't want anything big and heavy. If you wanted them bigger, of course, you could do that bigger, but I'm not going to today. I'm gonna play around with couple different sizes. I'm going to make some even smaller ones for little studs, I think, just to play around and see what I like. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to close my other windows. So now I've got my page layout all set up. And now I can just send it to the printer. All right, now let's talk about the shrink paper. So there's no instructions that came with this stuff. Um, I don't really feel any difference between one side and another. Um, they both feel pretty much the same. I'm only gonna put one sheet in at a time. Um, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope. All right, so let's give it a shot, guys. Let's hope it works. I'm be really nervous. <laughs> action. It seems to be taking the paper really well. You can see my print coming out. Oh, that's exciting. Wow, look how crisp that came out. Okay, I'm really surprised. That is so cool looking. Oh my gosh, now I'm super excited. And the black came out really nice and black too. I was worried it'd come out like milky, but I really, really like it. I think next time I design these though, I'm going to erase all the stuff I drew in white and just draw like black with clear lines. I may have to edit the design so that it glows the way I want it to. Like maybe there should be no design where the white skeleton is. Okay guys, so I just took the skeletal part out of the image and cut it out. And look how much better this image came out. So now those bones are gonna glow in the dark just like I intended. Oh, so yeah, you have to make whatever part you glow want to glow clear and I, I think this is gonna work so much better another thing to note I am using an inkjet printer with this it says you can use an inkjet or a laser jet but being it shrink paper I didn't think I wanted to use the laser jet because of the heat would cause the paper to shrink or curl so yeah inkjet the way to go for sure all right, next design I'm gonna be working on are these cute zombie goldfish. I don't know, I just, they're cute. And with some severed fingers for your ear parts. I just think it's adorable. Yeah, I know, I'm a dork. And now I'm ready to send to the printer. Look at 
Look at it. These are gonna be awesome. All right, so my next design is this cute little gold goldfish with bubbles on top. He's adorable too. I'm printing him out right now. So there is that design all printed out. Oh, he's so cute. Can't wait to wear them. They'll match my hair. Okay, so with the bubble goldfish, I'm gonna do these a little differently. I'm gonna print the goldfish bowls first because I want them to be relatively big on the ear space about like that. So I'm gonna fill the page and then I'm gonna print the little goldfish separately so they'll be a little smaller. I'm gonna send these to the printer next. I'm gonna make a bunch of these goldfish because I think some of them will be really cute as studs as well by themselves. Adorable. Is this? How can you say no? How could you? They're so cute! Also, did this cute tarantula design. I did two tarantula desi designs actually this one and then like a candy corn colored one. Uh, for some friends I know who asked me to do it. So I'm going to print those out too. I mean, look how pretty they are. This is one of the bejeweled Brazilian tarantulas, I guess. There's my reference photo. I just loved all the colors. All right, I am sending the candy corn spider to the printer. Tarantula. Cute those guys are too. Oh, these are gonna be great. Since Headless Horseman is out all over the town this year on a Halloween day court, I thought I'd pay homage and make him this year too. Those are gonna be so cool. <laughs> oh, I am so excited. All right, well, I've got a mighty stack of designs to cut out and get to cooking, so let's get to cutting. I'm gonna use a fine tip, uh, small pair of scissors to get a little detail, and I'm gonna leave a border around some of these, so I'm not gonna cut exactly on the image, but I'm gonna cut like slight around. Um, I'm not gonna film myself cutting anything. Um, you know, just do the best you can. If you know how to use your Cricut, of course you can do that or whatever electronic cutting device. I'm just not comfortable with using mine for this yet. Um, I do have some extra prints of some of these to practice with later on uh, when I get there. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm gonna be cutting for the next couple of hours. All right, I will see you guys back in the lab as soon as I am done cutting all of these awesome designs. Okay guys, so I've got some of my pieces cut out. I've got them on my tray. Uh, so I actually did find instructions. There's a website you can go to for the instructions on all the printing, cutting, and cooking methods of the glow and dark shrink paper. So I went online, I got the instructions. Um, instructions say to heat this uh, at 350, between 350 and 400 degrees until it flattens out. So no time, but we'll just watch and see how they come out. So I'm gonna use my toaster oven today and I'm gonna set the dial. I'm actually gonna go between 350 and four and then I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna let it preheat before I stick these in. And then once they're done baking, I've got it on a piece of parchment paper so I can slide it off. I'm gonna lay it on the counter and then I'm gonna use, just use my iron because it's the only thing I can think of that's heavy enough and like will make it flat to flatten it out once it's, uh, so it cools completely. And then we should have a pair of earrings. So really cool. Okay, so my toaster oven is preheated and I am now going to stick these in. then I'm gonna bring you guys closer so you guys can feel the fun action.
Oh, look at they're starting to curl. Oh my God, that's so scary. I guess patience is the key because you do have to wait till they sort of flatten out again. Wow, that's so freaky. All right, so I would say that's done. And then I'm just putting my iron over top of them like that, just so that they flatten out. And I'm gonna leave them cool just like this. Now my iron is not on, by the way. It is just the cold iron. I don't even have it plugged in. I'm just using it as a weight. And perfect. So they're pretty much cool to the touch now. And this is what we've got. The holes look perfectly sized. It looks like a really good size for an earring. Just the size I really wanted. So to me, that's perfect. The next step we have to do is we have to seal this all in there. So I'm gonna go over top of this with some UV resin and then cure that so that we get a nice shiny glossy finish. All right, I'll show you that step next. Okay, so I've got all of my designs baked um, and now I'm going to be adding the resin. You guys, how to do the UV part. These are all of my designs. This is my UV light cure uh, resin. You're just gonna wanna give that a shake. Oh, also, before we start, rubber gloves, very important. All right, so hands protected, UV resin shaken. I'm just going to take my first design, let's go with this one, and I'm going to, I'm going to put a blob kind of like in the middle here and another one near the tail where my biggest parts are. And then I'm going to use a silicone push tool that you can usually find in the resin section to just push the resin to all the areas I want it to get to. The resin will make this last forever and give it a really nice shiny coat. The piece is going to want to slide around on you a little bit because the foil is slippery, but that's okay. You just kind of have to be patient. Now, one thing I do want to note is my designs printed a lot darker than I thought they were. 
So, uh, you know, something I learned is next time when I go to print these, I'll print them lighter. Some of my designs you can barely see because they came out too dark after baking them. All right, so I've got that all smoothed on there. All the parts are covered pretty evenly. Now, before we cure this in the machine, we have to take a regular lighter, like a barbecue lighter, and you wanna just kiss the top of the resin with the lighter. And what that does is that'll kill any air bubbles that are in it so you won't get bubbles in your finished product. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my light cure machine. Uh, this is set, has a time setting for 180 seconds. We wanna do two runs on that, so about six minutes. I'm just gonna slide this inside and I'm gonna push the button. And then when we come back, I'll have all of these cured and I'll show you how to attach all the jump rings. Okay, so now our last step is to put the findings on so that we can make them into earrings. So some of them are gonna get fish hooks and some are gonna get studs on the back. Some are gonna get a combo fishnet and a dangle. And then others still, I've got one that I'm gonna do a hoop for because I think it's gonna be super cute. All right, so let's start with the hoop. Hoops are pretty easy. They're basically just a a solid ring with a circle at the end and it's going to go in your ear and hold your charms that we made. So for the hoop earrings, I've actually got two designs. So you're basically just going to thread them onto the hoop, making sure that the, the circle would be to the back of your ear. So you want your design facing this way. So I'm just going to put the fishbowl on and then the little fish that's going to be swimming into the fishbowl and then with a pair of flat nose needle pliers you need to take this little tip here at the very end and you just need to bend it up at a 45 just like that and that would be your completed fish in a fishbowl and he can swim when you move. I think that's super cute. All right, next one I'm gonna show you how to do is I'm gonna show you how to attach the jump rings to a dangler. So for that, you're gonna need two jump rings. And two fish hook tops. So for the jump ring, that's a little tricky. So there's a split in every jump ring. Every jump ring has a split where the two ends go together. You're going to need two pair of pliers. You're going to put one plier on either side of that split. And then you're going to twist your wrist in opposite directions. So one wrist goes forward, the other wrist goes backwards. And then you can see that the jump ring splits in half. And then you're just going to thread your charms on that. If it's not open enough, just open it a little more by doing the same motion. Now the reason you do it that way instead of pulling them apart is if you pull them apart you actually weaken the jump ring and then the jump ring won't be able to close. It'll bend and break. To close the jump ring you just do the opposite motion and then your jump ring is closed. And there you have a fish dangling on a bunch of bubbles. All right, so you can continue uh, you know, putting your jump rings on. There are a couple other flat, small ones that I made to put posts on. 
Um, for that, you're just going to use like a super strong glue and glue the post right to the middle of the back of the earring. Like so. And then you're done. And you have cool pairs of earrings to wear for Halloween season. jewelry products or crafting products you'd like me to do. Um, make sure to give us a like on the, today's video if you like what you saw today. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of all the fun going on here in the web. And don't forget to share so that we can find more people who might like what we do. Thank you for joining me again and goodbye. I'll see you next time in the lab.